Hey everyone, VJohnnyC here with another old school RuneScape Trailblazer video. Today I want to talk about the region of Asgarnia. There's a lot of things going for it, a lot of good reasons to pick it, but I want to tell you guys maybe about things that you haven't thought of. So let's get right into it. By the way, the old school RuneScape wiki has actually been updated to include the Trailblazer League regions. You can go ahead and find them by the search bar in the top right. Today we're looking at Asgarnia though. And I really wanted to talk about this region because it's going to take up a lot of a lot of space. There's a lot of time. There's going to be a lot of tasks um, right off the bat. We've got Berthorp. You're going to have access to one of the low level Slayer Masters. You're going to have access to the Rogue's Den, uh, which does include the Rogue's Outfit. Uh, you're going to have access to Defenders, one of the best in slot offhands. You also have access to the Dwarven Mine, which does include Motherlode Mine, and probably less mentioned is going to be the Mining Guild. We'll get into that, why that's important here in just a moment. Entrana is going to be really great for crafting Law Runes, but I think PVM drops are going to be a bit quicker. Falador is going to be really important. That's going to be one of your main sources of Crushed Bird's Nest by actually killing the Giant Mole. You'll also have access to the Goblin Village, which means that you can actually do the Dorgish Conquest, or at least most of it, enough to get yourself a Bone Crossbow and Bolts. God Wars Dungeon is going to be big for your endgame PVM content. Realistically, the number one item in my mind from there is going to be the BGS. If you do want to keep up to date, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment down below on whether or not you're actually picking Asgarnia and looking forward to doing Pest Control. I'm going to scroll through this pretty quickly here. There are some restricted travel locations. Notable combat related activities are going to include the Asgarnia Ice Dungeon. You do have access to the Ice Gloves there. Of course, unlocking Fremi does give you access to the Ice Gloves automatically. You will get access to Cerberus, which does include best in slot boots, provided that you'll get the Dragon Boots from the God Wars Dungeon or the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon. You'll also get access to Taverly Dungeon, which will include a fair amount of dragons. Warrior's Guild is going to be pretty important, like I mentioned before, Cyclops and Defenders. Notable non-combat related activities are going to include the Crafting Guild, Falador Rooftop Agility Course, whether you choose to do that or not, that's going to be entirely up to you, I shan't. Falador Tree Patch and Allotment Patch. The Heroes Guild will also include some Rune Rocks. Access to the Motherlode Mine for your AFK mining. Now, if you do take Endless Harvest here, we're not entirely sure how that's going to work. I really doubt they're going to change the uh, pay dirt to go to your bank. Like I mentioned, you'll also get access to the Rogue's Den. Less thought of rune crafting. you'll have the Air, Body, Law, and Mind Altars uh, fairly close to the bank, which may actually be worth doing considering that you'll have uh, effectively infinite run. Uh, you also get access to the Taverly Tree Patch and the Troll Stronghold Herb Patch. Slayer tasks that will be added will include Black Dragons, Blue Dragons, Hellhounds, Skeletal Wyverns, Trolls, and Spiritual Creatures. Cerberus as well. As for unlocks, the only quest that's auto-completed here will be Merlin's Crystal, and the only task that is auto-completed will be the Fort Serum Rat Pits. Now, with Merlin's Crystal being the only quest that is auto-completed, there are quite a large amount of quests that you will be able to complete yourself. So there's going to be a lot of juicy quest experience in Asgarnia. Most notably, your earliest ones are going to be Doric's Quest and the Knight's Sword. For notable drops, uh, the list is quite large. Asgarnia is looking pretty good here. We're looking at the Armadale Crossbow from Saradomen in God of War's Dungeon. Armadale Armor and Hilt from Kriara in the God Wars Dungeon, Bandos Armor and Bandos Hilt for the BGS in the Bandos God Wars Dungeon, Dragon Boots from the Spiritual Mage, like I said, that is also obtainable from the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon, Godsword Shards, of course, the Primordial, Pegasian, and Eternal Crystals from Cerberus for your best of slot boots, Saradome and Godsword might actually see some use here as well. You also get access to the Staff of the Dead drop from the Zami Room, and the Zamorak Spear will be a must-have if you're unlocking Corporeal Beast in the Wilderness. Now, killing Giant Mole actually isn't that difficult to do. Of course, he does have really high defense, and, you know, it, it's all going to depend on the relics that you get and best of slot gear of which region you have available. For God Wars dungeon bosses, it's going to be pretty difficult to consider them grindable for resources unless the fights are going to be instanced. Now, we don't actually know if they're going to be instanced. They may make some kind of exception for the league, which is what we're hoping on. 
stay tuned for news on that. But as of right now, I wouldn't look to be killing the God Wars dungeon bosses for PVM resources. I want to talk about the achievement diary real quick. So a lot of the other regions actually have the tasks auto completed for the areas that they couldn't access. So for this diary, recharging your prayer in the Port Serum Church while wearing full prostolate does require the, the Slug Menace and Wanted, which will be incomplete or unable to be completed with just as Garnia unlocked. Not to mention the purchase a white two-handed sword from Sir Vivin. That will also be uh, unable to be completed. So just a heads up on there. Hard and elite diaries won't be able to be completed from just within Asgarnia. I wanted to bring up pest control real quick because that's one of the biggest reasons for actually choosing Asgarnia. Not their God Wars dungeons or the other bosses. Um, so pest control, as far as stats go for how long it's going to take to achieve your void outfit... The novice boat looks to be about 80 to 90 points per hour, which is going to put you about at about 10 hours total for just the regular void set. In order to get all void sets, you're looking at about 15 hours. And to get elite void entirely is going to be about 20 hours on the novice boat. Intermediate boat is going to be about 7 hours, 11 hours for all void sets, uh, 15 hours for elite void. Veteran boat is going to be 5 hours for just one set, 9 hours for all void sets, in about 12 hours for elite void set so that is a lot of grinding uh, just pest control or you could be using that uh, that time elsewhere thanks for making it to the end of the video i did want to have a special shout out to everyone who subscribed and allowed me to hit that 100 subscriber count i really appreciate each and every one of you thank you everyone who watches my videos i look forward to keep putting out uh, content like this